this is the first really decent rain that we've had of 2020. It's been raining pretty hard for about uh, oh, an hour or two. It's kind of let up now. It is uh, oh, after 6, 6, 6.30. See the water's already uh, run down here to the uh, terraces. But uh, I noticed something here because of this real heavy downpour. It's some stuff that I've been needing to fix anyway. When I go over here to the little pond literally in the time that it took me to drive down the hill this uh, diversion channel started flowing and you can see ahead of me this little arc is uh, draining part of this hill but just over this uh, by that tree there and coming through this valley is the diversion channel that sends water off of it goes from the big pond which is directly straight up by the diversion channel the overflow comes down here to the little pond and this is a terrace here that I'm driving sort of angle you can see and this is diverting the water into the little pond as it comes off the hills but I see why this little pond isn't really filling like it should this is the overflow for the little pond once it gets up you can tell take another four feet of water or well a couple of three feet anyway then the water comes out here flows along this channel To this, uh, into this little channel, and right down here into where we got this stupid washout that I've been wanting to fix, and been thinking about how to fix it. Of course, this is not the time, but. Uh, the problem that we need to address. All of that water should be going into that little pond. And the problem is right over there on the other side. is just the runoff from behind us. But all of this needs to be diverted. Not one drop of this water should be going down here other than water that literally falls on it. That, uh, that little trench there, not on the other side, that's sort of a natural low spot or something, channel. But if you can tell, there's two berms right beside the tractor here where I drove. That is the drain from up the hill there past those two big trees. And you can see the water flowing through here. It's moving at a pretty good clip. But I need to build a terrace right across here because literally all of this water being forced to pile up and go into that pond right through here there's not much we can do I can fix this up there and then uh, 
this this little channel closed just as a sort of a berm. There's not much I can do to divert that water because the high point is right in front of us. But reworking this, all of this water would be going into that little pond, which is where it should be going. And one good uh, good terrace right here where I drove I would send all this water because this water here that's piled up is piled up because it's come off that hill and this is kind of a natural low spot so it's got to be put uphill of it to divert the water before it gets down here so See this. Uh, I'm gonna drive along this channel. I hope I don't fall in an animal den. That wouldn't be good. I always wondered why this stupid channel was here. And you see the water flowing through that one. I'm trying to get this before it gets dark because daylight is getting short. The only way to divert the water from there over to here would be to build, connect that terrace, there's a terrace right there, <coughs> connect that terrace over to here, right through here, in fact I'm going to drive it so I leave tire tracks, there is a terrace, or the remains of one right here, it's real low, but if a person put here it is, right up here. With a terrace directly across here would divert all of this flow. And then you can see here, see the water rushing through there. All of this water coming through. This is sort of a natural high spot right uh, behind me, where we just were, where the water's really moving quick, it gets thin, but you see that channel there, so what needs to happen is, this uh, needs to be opened up and the dirt moved over to here to divert that water down towards that little pond, because all this water is basically going to waste, it's going right into the paper. been trying to cut along that cow path right there. Cutting along that cow path and on down to where that little pond. But we need to uh, divert this water because there's no sense in just letting it go down the creek when our little pond is not staying as full as it should. And then I want to go on the other side and show why those stupid terraces need some rework over there on the other side of this back hill where they're so high, why they're incredibly stupid and need reworked because whoever laid this out didn't think it through very well. This drain, this slough, little slough here, which flattens out right at the top of this hill, is draining the whole top of this hill. And see, here's a terrace here that we're about to cross. It's bringing water down off of the hill, but it's not a lot of water. It's not flowing, you know, it's not foot deep water. On this other side, and then all these terraces are kind of coming to this little uh, valley in here and bringing 
this water down. Like there was a terrace we just crossed. Here's the terrace we're about to cross. Granted, the flow is tapering off up here because of the uh, the rain has let up considerably. It's still raining, as you can see in the headlights, but it's not as raining as hard as it was. And the higher we go, the less runoff it is. But this little this little. Uh, Blue is draining this entire hill. And then right up here, you can see that terrace on the little water. And then this terrace is bringing a lot of water around for some reason. I don't know exactly why. And this terrace, it's holding its water, which is good. I'd rather it hold the water because it'll soak in in a day day or two at the most. But now we're at the top of this uh, middle hill and I'm going to cut across if I don't bounce my brains out in these stupid hog wallets. Had some hogs come up here and rooted this up pretty good a year or two ago. And I need to come disc it up and replant it or something but smooth it out. Thing. And this might be the time to do it now that we've gotten a good rain. But I gotta catch this before we get dark. The daylight's gotta fade fast. So I'm sure we're about 7 o'clock or so, but now I don't know. So here you can see the knob of the hill is sort of behind me and the water's coming down to this first terrace and it's really piling up which is what a terrace is kind of supposed to do. other terrace is not holding as much. This is holding it back. So this terrace is good. This one doesn't need a thing done to it. Maybe flatten it out a little on the other side because it wouldn't hurt. It gets awful steep on the other end of it. Out here it's perfect. You know? And of course there's a little bit of water flowing. And of course it's coming off the top of this hill through this little natural low drain. And then here it's flowing pretty good. There's all this water coming off of the hill behind us and it's coming through this little natural drain, which it's going to do. There's not much you can do about it. If you build this up a little bit, it would slow it down. And, you know, you see here it's kind of carved a little natural channel here. Here you can see the stuff that's floated up and everything. Nope. But these stupid terraces from here on down curve this away. And they're funneling all this water down here. When they should be curving basically back towards the, the other way to slow the water down and trap it. Instead, this acts like one giant funnel. All this water coming off of this hill is being ducted right down here. Which is why this is washing. It's not washing bad, but you know, because it does it hadn't taken out the sod, but you see this water draining down here? All right now I'm driving in the water six inches deep, but I mean it's it's gushing. And of course this is the natural drain for that hill. And of course all of this water that's coming down off of these terraces. Right here's the high spot where the terrace is curved the wrong way at the end of it. And then all this water is coming out here on this uh, kind of flat low spot. But then look what we get here. This is 
really slowed down from what it was because it was just pouring. And there's a little drop off there that I'd like to kind of take out, smooth out. And of course this water is ultimately going to feed down into the neighbors. That's a, that's a given. The neighbor over here, when he farmed that hill, when the neighbor used to farm cotton on this back field back in the 50s, and he always dissed his turning rows right along the border fence with us. This was a previous owner, not the current owner. And I don't know if you can see that, there's about a five to six foot drop off. That's how much topsoil he lost by having his turn row going straight up and down the hill through here. And behind me, you can see this little trough. That's the natural drain for these terraces above us. But they started washing off, caving off and everything else. Well, this is going to drain through here. There's absolutely nothing you can do to stop it, but I do want to fix these stupid washouts. And uh, this is this is the little one here. I think most of the water is going through there. This is the bad one. Grandpa had thrown some junk in there and tin and stuff trying to stop it, but that doesn't do anything. As you can see, little bar wire scraps of wood and junk. Need to clean all that up, but it's so steep you can't hardly get a tractor down in there. But if this dirt was reworked through here, let me turn around and get some video of it. Kind of see where the water is and then you know where the low spot is. There's a little water going over that drain, that washout. There's a little washout trying to start there. But uh, basically this needs to be eased back. Maybe pull some of that dirt away from the fence, back up in there, kind of smooth it out, level it out, and make that way more gradual. And of course get grass established on it a sod so that it doesn't wash all the dirt under the fence on the next rainstorm. And that's the real trick. Here you can see Finally, kind of eased back. I need to just smooth this out just a little bit and just leave this as the natural drain. But here you can see I'm going to cut up the hill and you can see how much water is coming down this stupid thing. I won't quit driving through it so I don't tear the sod up. But gigantic terraces and all they're doing is dumping the water right out of the farm and like I said because that's all uphill from that drain this water can't go to the pond but we could hold it up here on our own hills and let it soak in to benefit our own grass Paul built these terraces sky high. Dad used to brag about it that they built these with that 8 in tractor and uh, all of that. And all it does, you know, there's some water being trapped here, but all the topsoil's mounded up in them stupid super high terraces that are hard to work over, you know, when you come back here to feed hay or chop it and whatever and you got to crawl the tractor over these things so wait till you get to the other end of them I mean this is nothing then I'm going to go look at the big pond that I'm done but once we get over to here I'm going to start crab kind of crabbing over these things oops farm it dead 
this isn't even the worst of it. In fact, some of these I can't grab over because I'm afraid I might roll the tractor. I like this one. I'm going to go straight over it. Here, I'm not moving the camera. Ooh, as much as I can. This is so these are entirely too tall. There's absolutely no need for those terraces to be that steep. They're not holding four feet deep water. That's not the purpose of a terrace. And like this one here, is catching all the water coming off of this hill and diverting it over there, which isn't a problem because it doubles back, comes right down through there. You can kind of see that little channel. Ooh, boy, I don't want to hit that one. Good grief. Or that one. Anyway, all this water is coming right around there, right down this uh, natural slough. Here's another little old terrace, but it can stay. I don't mind the low ones. And I don't, you know, I just don't like the super tall ones, and I don't like it uh, where it's not keeping the water on our place, you know, as long as possible to let it soak in as much as possible. This water is coming down from over by the fence after it doubles, doubles back. And it's flowing into the pond. The pond is nearly full now compared to previous videos. This, I need to, uh, a lot of this dirt was hauled out of the pond when I dug this out a few years ago during the drought when it went dry. If we had a little channel here, it would let some of this water actually drain into the pond a little easier. It's going into the pond anyway, and out here it gets plumb deep. It's like a foot deep or more out here. This is normally pasture. You gotta see, it's, it's up in the rims. And the water's going right over the embankment into the pond there, nearly up to the step of the tractor. Just about. They didn't run it through the pipes yet. It still will be. There's the little pond over there. This is the drain. Slough. You can see there by the tree, the water comes right through that valley, right up here, and comes off those drain pipes when the pond overflows. And if the pond gets super full, which we've had happen before, it'll go over this low water crossing. This low water crossing is designed, it's a bunch of rocks and gravel, riprap, rock. Uh, bricks, broken concrete blocks that we bought from a place down in Eagle Lake to divert, to make a low spot that's just covered with a little loose sand. And so if it starts to wash, it's going to wash down to the rock and stop. And that's why I piled up all these rocks here on both sides of it to uh, our little low water crossing, drive across it, and the rock on this side protecting the pipes, you can kind of see it's some bricks and stuff, so it's probably going to start draining, and of course the drain water from here goes right down into the little pond, right through this little flue here. Just the other side of that tree is where we drove around past the little pond. So, anyway, it's, this rainstorm runoff has probably put a good uh, two, two feet.
feet of water at least in this pond in the last two hours. And then of course this is the dirt that I took out of the pond I spread through here because this was a natural low spot. And of course it's a pound of water on the back side. Well I'm not too worried about this. It'll soak in in a couple of days. There might be standing water in little puddles here or something for a week. But at least this water is going into our pond. in the back on the other side of this ridge and the water coming off of these two hills on his place are coming into our farm so that's just sort of a you know luck at a draw it all ultimately ends up down at Ponton Creek anyway which is the farm to the north of us here you can see this the border fence the water coming off of his hill going into our pond but uh, I just hate to see that water run off so fast. Give it a chance to soak in where it does your water table and your soil profile more good, you know. Yeah, this is a little softer here. That's chopped where I chopped. I'm gonna go up by the fence because I didn't chop because I shred this little strip. gas flare on the neighbors there. And this is the peak ridge of the farm here. Divides that half going into the pond from this half that's flowing down the hill. Boy, this is soft. Ooh. This is uh, real sandy up here. You can still see the chop marks. I don't know if you can it's dark too good, but I can see them real plain. Almost straight down the slope of the hill, you probably see a little green slough. That chopping really, really stimulated the grass. We went for a walk last night, and I was just kind of shocked at how much Bermuda has popped up and how quick this Bermuda. It likes that chopper, it loves that chopper. Bermuda just does wonders with it because what it does is it chops the stolons apart, especially if you go like at an angle, if you chop this again at an angle, it would cover this field in a diamond shaped little, little it would be a pattern of diamonds, diamond shaped pattern across the entire field. And every Bermuda plant in each little diamond it's completely separate from the Bermuda plants and other diamonds. So by cutting the stolons, it really encourages it to grow. And as I come down this hill, oh, oh there was a farm of death. Uh -huh. Coming down. 
on this hill, you can see this is where the natural drain for this entire front part, third of the farm is. Some of this water is probably coming through for the neighbors. And then we pick up the natural drain right through here. Little, little spot above that little ridge. 